Hey guys, what is going on? McMull2 here, welcome back to my channel. I said it was going to take a couple weeks off after the State of the Game video, which by the way has become very popular, over 45,000 views so far, a lot of likes, a lot of people really enjoyed that video, I'm glad I could give that video out to a lot of people, so just so I could be a voice for everybody in the community. So yeah, I'm definitely glad to have that video be as successful as it is. It's now my most popular video I believe so yeah thank you to everybody for those messages of support and everybody reaching out to me and saying thank you for being a voice I'm glad that I could reach out for you guys and be that voice that you guys were so desperately needing but anyways let's move on past the sappy stuff let's talk about what's going on recently in the game and why I'm back so early and it's because the Night Sisters are out we got events for them a lot of events we also got the event for Ewoks and the ATST Heroic Endor Battle, that's all back, but there is some controversy going on with that, there was the big update, and of course with every new update that we get for Galaxy of Heroes in typical fashion, something else breaks in the process. This time it was a horrifying and terrifying glitch in the tank raid where the top turret would not lose turn meter when it dies, so it would come back with turn meter and eventually reach 100% turn meter, and you'd run into horrifying situations like this. Surprise, motherfucker! And to throw gasoline on this horrifying fire of a bug, there were players asking for it to be fixed ASAP on the bug section of the forums, and of course one of the devs responds with, it's not a high priority bug, so it'll be fixed at a later time. Now thankfully they did fix it the next day, but that initial response was not very uh, not very reassuring for many players, especially those who were about to do their zergs on their tank raids, and all of a sudden they can't do it because the tank is just completely destroying everybody. So thankfully they did fix that, so thank you CG for fixing that as quickly as you guys did. Now, one other funny thing to point out is that uh, recently players have been getting surveys in the game asking for feedback and this actually got sent to me as well back on Tuesday or Wednesday. And it was one of those funny things where we just had the mess with the whole weekend of me getting removed from the Game Changers program and this pops up and it's like, do you guys really want my feedback? Are you sure you want to have my feedback right now on this game? But it is a pretty decent survey. If you do get it sent to you, have definitely take a look at it, fill it out, because it's asking a lot of questions about territory battles. There's a lot of players saying that territory battles are not good for the game. It's really wasting their time, and a lot of players are saying they are not seeing themselves playing the game much more here soon. So this is definitely something that you should fill out, because hopefully the devs are paying attention to this feedback survey. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and talk about this event with the Night Sisters and the Ewoks. And in my State of the Game video, I had talked about how we need more gear events and Zeta events, something to get over those gear crunches. And thankfully, CG listened and they implemented my feedback in that video, and they spontaneously brought out these events that they totally had no plan of whatsoever before. So for all that, with the gear and the Zetas, you guys are welcome. That is a joke. Do not take that seriously. But yeah, we have these two new events with fighting Sith with either Night Sisters or Phoenix, and you have the two events with a defense of Dathomir and the Rogue Endor battle with Ewoks taking on the ATST. Both of those two events can give you Zetas. You have the advanced tactics with Night Sisters that can also give you gear, but there is some controversy brewing over the events and how they're implemented, and also some release cadences for these new characters. So let's go ahead and go into that, and why I think that CG is totally messing up this release cadence, and why I think they need to fix it. And first up, we have the Endor Escalation Battle, where you got your Wicked Shards, and every time you complete Tier 1, you're supposed to get 10 Wicked Shards, supposed to be guaranteed 10 Wicked Shards. Unfortunately, that was broken where you were getting anywhere between 6 to 10 Wicked Shards that first time, and there was also another problem with the refreshes, where if you refresh Tier 1, you were locked out of ever getting any Tier 2 battles in done that time. They have now since then fixed these. The problem is they could not fix them for the current event, and there is some complaints, you know, there has been a pattern before sometimes where instead of changing the or fixing the bug so much, they just kind of change the description and just kind of gloss over it, and that felt like a problem here, but they have said they're going to fix it in the future so you're guaranteed 10 shards each time and that you can refresh each tier separately, so fingers crossed that that does get fixed. 
And then we got the Defensive Dathomir event, which was the event where you get Mother Talzin shards, and she's just like Wicked, where you can only get her shards through this event. And it was actually correctly fixed this time, so that you were guaranteed the 10 shards, and you could refresh each tier separately. So that was nice to see. They were able to fix it in time for the Defensive Dathomir event. So thank you, CG, for getting that fixed and making sure that's working properly. Kudos to you guys for that. And of course, so now you have this event, just like with Wicked, you're going to gain both of their shards through these events. And of course, they also did the same thing for Night Sister, Zombie, and Spirit, where they have a defensive Dathomir event that's going to be running on Halloween, and you're also going to earn their shards through that event. It's sort of like a flash event, judging from the description they put on the forums. So we don't know too much about it now. There looks like it's going to be a flash one where it gets push notifications on your phone. So we'll get more looks at that. But with the excitement of all these new events, they did put something out late Friday that kind of killed the mood for everybody. And first up, we have Wicket, and CG Ride Diggs put out the post, and he's just clarifying the release schedules for Wicket and the three new Night Sisters. And for Wicket, he's going to be available exclusively through the Endor Escalation battle, which is going to recur at least once per month until otherwise announced. There will also be availability in the Chromium shipments and the Ewok faction packs. You can get Wicket faster through those, paying crystals on those. But if you're free to play, you're strictly going to be doing the Endor Escalation battle for Wicked Shards. That is 10 shards per attempt. You can refresh the attempt for 780 crystals, I believe. So it's a pretty steep investment for another 10 Wicked Shards. So that's up to your free-to-play players if they want to do that. And then, of course, they also have the Night Sisters. And with Mother Talzin, she'll be released via the Marquee event, which we already had. She will be appearing in Chromium Packs later on. And then after the Chromium Packs are there, another four to six weeks after that, they're kind of twisting around the release cadence a little bit here. After another four to six weeks of being in Chromium, the Defensive Dathomir event will return. So we're looking at three to four months before, excuse me, we're looking at two to three months before the Defensive Dathomir event will return, at which point you can only get Mother Talzin Shards through Chromium Packs or through the Defensive Dathomir, just like Wicket. And also looking at this with Night Sister Spirit and Zombie, they are only going to be obtained through the Ghost of Dathomir event. It is not a marquee event, so it will not follow the normal character release canes. So pretty much the new Night Sisters and Wicket are pretty much going to be pay to play to get them up to seven stars. Now you're saying, well, about three to four stars. You can still use them in Arena, but if you're looking at to use them in seven stars, and I do think that both Spirit and Zombie could be pretty good raid characters with their kits with the tenacity down and the term meter removal and the speed down. I think they could be useful in the raids, but the problem is you are going to have to wait two years if you're free to play to get these characters a seven star. You're saying two years, that doesn't sound right. Let's go ahead and break down this math if we're going off the assumption that these events are returning once a month. Now, side note, this is going off of the assumption that you're completely free to play. So if you are going off of a finished marquee event, all the tiers, you have a character at three stars with 15 out of 30 shards, and each new event will give you 10 shards per attempt. And if you're going off the assumption that each event is once a month, like they said they're probably going to be doing, that means you need 265 more shards to go from 15 to 30 to 7 stars. So 27 more attempts with one attempt per month, it's going to take you 27 months to get a 15 of 30 3 star marquee character to 7 stars. Now you could do the pack that shows up for $10 where you get another 25 shards, that would knock you down to about 24 months, that's still 2 years. You can refresh the event for four for 780 crystals, that's a pretty hefty price. It's not something your free to play players are really going to do, your true free to play will not do that refresh. 24 months for a 7 star character, that is absolutely absurd. Now one thing that may have been mentioned is that they're trying to make it similar to a hard node farming character, but that math is completely off. Let's go ahead and break down why that math is completely off. With a hard node character you get 5 attempts per day and the shard drop chance is about 33%, so 1 out of every 3 attempts on a hard node you will get a character shard. So with 5 attempts per day with 33% and you have a 30 days in a month, that's coming to 50 shards a month for that character. And to get a full 7 star character from zero, you have to get 330 shards, which means you're going to need about 6 to 7 months to get a 7 star character which is pretty much a quarter of the time you will need for the new marquee event characters. 
not so much marquee, but these new Night Sisters and Wicket, you can get another seven star character like Baze or Shore Trooper or anybody else in a hard note. You can get them in a quarter of the time that you will be spending to get a seven star character with one of the new ones with this new release schedule. The math here does not add up. It's weird what they're doing. I don't really like it because now I don't, I'm pretty much not spending any more money on this game as it is, but now I'm being punished because I don't want to spend money on the game, now I have to wait two years. And I get it, there's supposed to be an advantage for free to play versus pay to play, but two years of waiting to get a character of seven stars, that's not so much a punishment, that's like if CG took a look at the wealth gap in America and said, you know what, that's a great idea, let's implement that into our system. And that is a huge problem for the player base, for any of your free-to-play players. There's a lot of players who don't want to spend money in this game anymore because they're not getting much return on their investment. And this feels like CG overreaching and trying to go for even more. And that is a problem. Their math here does not add up. This really looks like an issue. Like, they're trying to get as much money out of these new characters as they can. And this just does not look good for the game. A couple other quick things before I get out of here and go back to figuring out what exactly I'm supposed to be doing now. Uh, you guys may have seen this, is popping up on Reddit and the forums. There are these packs in Japan you can buy that give these incredible amounts of characters and Zetas and everything else. This is apparently an unintended feature. They're fixing it. You're not going to be able to get Zetas to these Japanese packs anymore. So to any Japanese players out there, sorry. This is a great deal for you guys. It's unfortunate that you guys are not going to be getting these deals anymore. But also, one other thing to note real quick, they noted that Rey has had her name changed to Rey and then Scavenger in parentheses. I'm pretty sure this means we're going to be getting a Jedi Rey here soon. There has been some rumors that we will be getting a Jedi Rey. And I think judging off of how we've had to farm up before for like BB-8 and Luke's journey and even Thrawn with his Chimera and the Panic Farms that they've been bringing in lately, I would not be surprised to see if we need veteran smugglers Han and Chewie for some kind of Jedi Ray event in December. They just both went to Chromiums in about four to six weeks. They'll go free to play. I think they're going to go free to play the exact same time they're going to announce a Jedi Ray event and you're going to have to get both those characters up to get the Jedi Ray unlocked. She's going to be a huge meta breaking character. She's going to completely shatter everything. Everybody's going to want her, and they're going to have to basically panic farm these characters. You will probably see them show up in shops somewhere, like Arena or Guild War shipments, anything like that, but you will still have to panic farm them. So be ready for that. Do not be surprised if that happens. They've done this before continuously with Thrawn and the other characters, so fully expect this to happen. Don't be surprised when it happens. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below in the comments. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys are enjoying this, and we are. I am going to talk to you guys later on about what I'm planning to do with my channel now. I am thinking about moving on from Galaxy of Heroes. There's just all this drama lately. It has kind of opened my eyes and made me realize there's other opportunities out there. Uh, I do have offers from other video game publishers that I am actively pursuing. I'm excited for that stuff. I hope you guys are excited for that too. I can't wait to show you guys what could be coming from those partnerships down the road. But again, guys, thanks again for watching and I will talk to you guys later.